One of the biggest mysteries in the technology world is the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto, the computer programmer who invented the digital currency Bitcoin. That's because Satoshi Nakamoto is a pseudonym. It may be the name of one person or the name of a group, but for over nine years now of Bitcoin's existence, no one has figured out who or what Nakamoto really is. Beyond solving a long-standing mystery, what sort of impact would uncovering Nakamoto's identity actually have? To answer that question, let's start at the beginning. In 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto published a nine-page white paper containing the first ever mention of Bitcoin, calling it a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. At this point, Bitcoin was just an idea on paper. But in 2009, Nakamoto put the concept to test, releasing the cryptocurrency's first software. Nakamoto was active those first few years, writing in forums, sending emails, and working with other developers and coders to improve the program. That all changed in 2011, when Nakamoto essentially vanished. No more forum entries, no more emails. And in all that time, nobody, not even close collaborators, ever met the founder in person. But here's the thing, whoever it is, they didn't walk away empty-handed. Nakamoto is estimated to have 1 million bitcoins, which as of today is worth over $5 billion. So why did Nakamoto just disappear? Well, there are two competing theories. There's the good Satoshi hypothesis, which holds that Satoshi really wanted to let Bitcoin go and become its own thing without him. The other hypothesis is that Satoshi really just saw Bitcoin taking off and wanted to keep his privacy. That's Matt Green, a cryptocurrency professor at Johns Hopkins University. He says the latter hypothesis is more likely. And as evidence, he points to the story of Dorian Nakamoto, a Japanese American who in 2014 was incorrectly identified as being the inventor of Bitcoin. Just a couple of years ago, Newsweek identified a man named Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto, who, who isn't Satoshi Nakamoto, but uh, they thought he was. And reporters descended on his house and tore apart his life. Do you mind speaking to us for a moment? No. I have nothing to do with Bitcoin. I just believe that somebody put that fictitious name in there. What this is all about. So I think there's a, a pretty good case to be made that the last thing you want to do in your life is be identified as the creator of Bitcoin. But for some people, being in the limelight is exactly what they want. Take Craig Wright. He's a former Australian academic who, in 2016, told the BBC on camera that he could prove he was the founder of Bitcoin. So you're going to show me that Satoshi Nakamoto is you? Yes. It didn't quite work out that way. Security researcher Dan Kaminsky concluded Wright's claim was intentional scammery. For someone like Craig Stephen Wright, it may have been, you know, beneficial in his mind to claim that, you know, authority. You're able to speak at conferences, you know, garner a lot of support. Ben Yu is a cryptocurrency investor living in San Francisco. He thinks Nakamoto is Nick Zabo, an American computer scientist. There is strong evidence pointing to certain people who may be Satoshi Nakamoto, but ultimately nothing definitively conclusive. So why do people keep searching? It comes down to money and politics. Bitcoin has a finite supply. There are only 21 million that can ever be mined. Nakamoto is assumed to have 1 million of them, which amounts to about 5% of the entire cryptocurrency. So let's put that in perspective. Take gold. The U.S. government holds the most gold reserves of anyone in the world at about 8,000 tons. The estimated total gold in the world is 187,000 tons, so the U.S. has about 4.3% of the world's total supply. That means Nakamoto may have a bigger stake in Bitcoin than the entire U.S. government has in gold. And if Nakamoto were to unload those Bitcoins quickly, the value of the crypto could tank. The thing about Bitcoin is if you control a million of them, you have the ability to flood the market at any point. Think of them as rare baseball cards, right? They're, they're valuable because they're rare. If somebody could dump hundreds or thousands of Mickey Mantle trading cards, rare ones, onto the market, they wouldn't be worth so much anymore. So that's kind of the danger with Satoshi. But some people don't think the impact would be long-lasting. Ultimately, like every form of currency or money, Bitcoin's value is predicated on its trust, and Bitcoin has already been deemed extremely trustworthy by a lot of people. There's about 
$3 billion of value being traded and trading volume every day, and the market cap is already over $70 billion. So even if Satoshi did crash the price with you know a few billion dollars of Bitcoin being sold, ultimately it would rebound back, I believe, as the trust is already there from many other parties. Then there's the influence Nakamoto could have on politics. So Bitcoin has been having a number of very complicated political kind of arguments between different factions. And a lot of these different factions have invoked Satoshi Nakamoto as kind of their guiding figure. They say Satoshi would have wanted this or Satoshi would have wanted that. That's easy to do because Satoshi's not there and so we don't actually know what Satoshi would have wanted. I think the community may actually benefit that you know, Satoshi did choose to come back and become a spiritual leader who could provide guidance and reconcile the community towards consensus. For now, though, it doesn't seem like Satoshi Nakamoto is interested in coming forward. Anonymity provides protection, privacy, and peace, three things that likely appeal to the owner of one million bitcoins. But is that really such a bad thing? With the havoc it could wreak on the price of bitcoin and internal politics, it may be better off that Nakamoto, whoever that is, remain anonymous and inactive indefinitely. But that won't stop people from wondering.